Welcome to the Peace and Possibilities Podcast. This is Julie Bruns, and you are about to be inspired. I am so excited to share my conversations with amazing people from all walks of life who figured out how to be happy, peaceful, and content doing work they love and making the world a better place so that you can see what's possible for your life. I can't wait to hear what you think. Send me an email and let me know one thing you're taking away from this episode. And never forget, anything really is possible. Welcome everyone to this episode. I'm here with Morty Bakar. And Morty and I have never chatted before. And Morty, I don't know if you know this, but it's more fun for me when I never even talked to people. Well, we chatted briefly about getting on the phone with you, but um, I don't know a ton about your background and work in a little bit because I discovered your art in um, Coastal Magazine that I picked up when I was uh, visiting family back um, a couple months ago in Ocean City, Maryland. And we took a trip to Delaware and a couple other trips while we were there. It was actually really, really cold, um, but it was, be- it was beautiful. I mean, it, it, was, it was an insanely cold weekend, but um, it was a beautiful area and I picked up your magazine and I like to do that when I travel and see new artists and stuff. And I saw your work in there and that's when I reached out and I said, come on my podcast and talk to me. You have a very, very interesting background um, with so many unique things intertwined that you wouldn't normally find together. So um, thanks for being here and I'm excited to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So tell us, first of all, what you do now and a little bit about your journey to discover what you do now and did what you're doing now. Did you do it all a little bit along the way or was it really just you did this one thing and then you went to this and back and forth? Tell us about that. So what what we do now, it's um, it's condensed version of three things I've done in the previous 15 years. I've done other things prior to that, but right now we we have three studios. Uh, We have the restoration studio, which includes three-dimensional art restoration. We do Kintsugi work. Uh, We have a pottery and sculpting studio, which we do commission, although I slow that down uh, because I'm so excited about Kintsugi and restoration. And I do only unique commission work, things like uh, hookah balls for the kingdom of Jordan or, you know, things that are exciting that, I haven't done before, so I take those commission work. Um, and we have a painting studio, which Patty mostly uses, uh, and it's all part of our property here in Lewis by, by the Marsh. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, most of my time is spent here where I'm sitting right now in a restoration studio. I have a bunch of objects all the way from my uh, grandmother's uh, um, figurine to a Picasso. Um, and we have some Kintsugi custom work in progress as well. So prior to that, what, what led to be able to do all these different things, prior to that, and, and I'm gonna go backwards, um, we had a, an art facility which included a school, mostly adults. We taught sculpting and pottery. It was very busy facility in Stanford, Connecticut. Um, then we spun off that, the restoration, uh, mostly by accident, people assume that a pottery studio can fix pottery, which it's not the case, it's so different. But one day the light bulb lit up and said, okay, you know, and, and it's a long story of how many things come together to, to make things happen. Yeah. So it was totally circumstantial. And so we did restoration and part of it was, uh, again, people assume that we know everything about anything that has to do with pottery. So we had a priest calling me about Kintsugi. He wanted to know more. I, di- I didn't know anything about Kintsugi. So we had a hard time navigating through the web. Kintsugi was new in the US at the time. There were maybe one other person that did it. And so I helped him by researching and calling him back. And through that research process, I said, wow, this is really amazing. You know, what, what I've encountered with Kintsugi was so many people seeking the object the repair ceramic that represent their journey as a metaphor for their story. They, you know, they wanted to hold something in their hand that, that represent themselves or, or a psychotherapist or a priest. And, and they're having difficulty sourcing that. And I said, okay, let me, let me figure that out. So I went on about a year journey of trying to figure out how to do it. And it was very hard to learn how to do the traditional Kintsugi. Uh, it sort of kept like a close secret in Japan and, What's uh, say, say the words? Um, that's a new word for me too, Morty. Say that word 
you're, the, the art word you're saying, kintsugi? Say kin, kintsugi. Kin kin, yeah, kin, it's a kin form sugi. of art, right? It's a form of restoring, like, will you just define it really quick so people oh, can- Sorry, I should have explained that. No, okay. Kintsugi uh, is, mm -hmm. uh, well, it started 1500 years ago where a king of sorts, it's something that was very dear to him and he wanted to be repaired because it broke and they didn't know how to repair it other than using gold. And when it got back to him, he said, wow, this is better than you. That, that's a short okay, version. That, okay. So, so the better than you uh, applies to people, people that are broken, whether it's mentally or physically or both, uh, apply that metaphor to themselves. And uh, it also emphasized that show the scar, be proud of your scars, don't hide yeah. them. That's that makes you a better person or better presentation of who you really are. So those objects was difficult to get. So yeah, so I finally figured that out. And then I ran into another issue. Gold is expensive. The, the traditional method of putting this together require um, tree sap and urishi. That's a traditional way of doing it. So I modernized the version to be able to get to a lower price point so more people can use the metaphor and people start buying it. Uh, and then it still was too expensive and the vast majority cannot afford it, as neither. Then I create another version of instead of using gold, using a, a metal compound, which I've developed with some partner uh, and it, really looks like gold and that is probably 70% of what people use and it enables since we started it thousands of people to use the metaphor successfully. It's so, crazy uh, that you um first of all I, I think it's interesting that this priest comes to you and says can you fix this thing for me because you have this special you know this is um um specialty in pottery and as, assumes that you know how to do it because you know about pottery or you know I know I'm simplifying the story, but you say, I don't even know. Let me look into it a little. And you look into it and you're like, this is really interesting. I can try this. You do it. You're good at it. And then you're like, wait a minute, I can make it even better. And I, it's, I find it fascinating that you just kept saying, well, how can I make this easier or more accessible to people that don't have a ton of money to put the gold back into the thing that's broken or whatever. But, and now you have this expertise that you didn't, even, you weren't really even looking for and that you weren't even all necessarily embracing in the beginning because you were like, I don't know, I'll, I'll see about it. And now it's, you know, it's become this really thriving um, part of your business. That's so cool. It does. And, and in fact, so, so I, I'm a sort of leading a forum on Facebook with uh, Kintsugi. There are over 4,000 members. A lot of them are Japanese. And they give me so much grief for changing the traditional process. And, and mm -hmm. my end was, you know, there is room for both. You know, why, yeah. why have a metaphor that people cannot really use uh, so we can do all the above, you know, we can do the traditional, the modified traditional with modern materials, still using gold in the, uh, the, the brass based, uh, Kintsugi and for years, it gave me grief. And, and I was very polite about it and uh, tried to show that art is a, an evolution, you know, like we moved from painting with our hands on a cave to brushes. So it's brushes, not traditional enough, uh, but I, I, I wasn't successful until I got an order from the State Department to do a Kintsugi project for President Biden. Uh, this was last year. This was the first uh, dignitary that came to the White House. And out of all the people in the world, that this dignitary was the Prime Minister of Japan. Wow. And, and uh, they very carefully chose what I would do and how I would do it and size and color and all. And I did not use the traditional process. It was gold, but not the traditional process. And that stopped all the argument. I said, well, listen, if it's good enough for the prime minister of Japan, <laughs> it's, it's good, so. Uh, I love it. You're so, it's funny that you're, you're, um, you're simplifying what you're doing, I know, and we're having this you know, brief conversation now, but I've written down um, one, two, three, four, four, five things that you've said already um, quickly about, because what you're doing is like, you're teaching other people, like philosophically through your, through your wisdom and your experience, like, um, Art is an evolution, and, and, and there are people that are probably just attached to this way of doing something because it's, it's nostalgic for them or whatever it is. And you're you're educating people as you're doing it instead of just saying, I'm just going to do my work and argue with them. You're like, no, it's there's room for both. It's it's it, Art is an evolution. It's, I love that you're teaching along the way instead of just doing your own thing and not responding. You're also not letting it get to you. You're just doing your work and and um, and letting it evolve. And that's, that's very inspirational. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah. So tell me about... Um, 
so I know that you weren't always doing this work. You had a, a whole other set of careers behind you before all this. Um, along the way, as you were on your journey and you were changing different things and trying out new art things and doing your other careers, what were what were you doing along the way to remain peaceful and content? What were you, or, or you sound like you're very, um, a lot like me where you love to learn and you like to try new things and what was keeping you, you know, instead of just being set in what, whatever you were doing and being bored, you sound like you were always trying something new and figuring out like, how did you do that and remain peaceful and content? Well, you know, I, I don't know how far to go and how much to cover, but, but I'll, I'll go backwards in order, in, in, in a reverse order. So prior to opening the ceramic school and studio, uh, which, you know, we, we, it was a very busy facility. You know, we, we drew people all the way from the tri-state area, New York, New Jersey, uh, New Canaan, Greenwich, all, all these high places. And uh, artists use the studio as well as classes. And we run it like a business, not like a school. Because And, and part of running it like a business is they, the business plan said that 50% of those we enroll in classes need to sign up for at least another class. And how, how do you achieve it? If, if you teach the traditional way, you know, a teacher of a curriculum and the student go through and then new students and they do the same thing, we need to do it the other way around. The teacher needs to be the flexible one to always invent new projects to, yeah. to people to advance themselves further. And we had some students that stayed 12 years in eight week programs. Wow. And it was difficult to achieve because you're always inventing new things, mm-hmm. new ways to do. Um, but it was amazing because, you know, one, one, um, one thing that happened to me, at least, uh, a lot of my work was in a gallery uh, in, in the back of the teaching studios. We had a few rooms in there. And uh, students went there to get inspired by the work. It wasn't just my work. It was Patty's and, and the other teachers' work. Um, and uh, they look at glazes to say, I want to do this. I want to mix this color with that color. And every few years, I look at my work in the gallery, which was about maybe 40% of it. And I threw it all out. I just hated it. Uh, I mm-hmm. said, OK, I've been there. I don't like it anymore. I'm moving forward with something new. I, I you know, I, I operate that dramatic because I, I get all itchy. You know, I, I need to start a new beginning. I, ne- I need a blank page. And then by uh, throwing it out, I sort of removed the shackle out of my leg, removed mm-hmm. all. Uh, and that sort of symbolizes my story. If I go f- backwards even further, everything was done that way. And it all started, um, I, I don't know, how much to, but I, I was born and raised in Israel and, and I was pretty feral. My parents were refugees from Europe and they were working hard and they just weren't available. They didn't speak the language. And, and I sort of learned what I know on my own in the streets. Um, and um, then I went to the military and became an officer. And then I knew that that's not what I want my career to be. So I needed a new beginning and I began to define like what is the meaning of life? And, and I can always mm-hmm. people give me grief about it. And I said, life really means nothing. Life means whatever you make of it. It's yes. all in it's all an illusion, but how how do you erase? How, how do you remove those shackles out of yourself to 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 create this new plateau? So so right after the military, I, I knew that I was sort of brainwashed about what Israel is all about and how I should behave, and and the people around you uh, confined you. If you change, they're going to say what happened to you. You know, you look different, you sound different. So I said, I've got to go really far away. And I went as far away as one can. I went camping six months in Africa. Wow. And that sort of cleared me up. Um, and it gave me a new page. And I said, OK, uh, I'm going to try the US. I stayed in Africa almost two years, all in total, and came to the US, um, signed myself for college, got an engineering degree, then um, moved up in the corporate world from an engineer to a team builder, to a team leader, then to a bunch of other titles, all the way to VP running department. Eventually, I have my own technology company, which was a think tank where we develop concepts. Um, mm-hmm. Then when <laughs> so and, and I was sort of burned out from technology, and and I missed to be on the bench of development rather than an administrator. Yeah. Uh, and then 
one day somebody offered us a lot of money to develop this thing, the new thing that came after 9-11, which was face recognition. And I was supposed to be the CEO. And I got that hum. I, I didn't mention the hum before. I sort of, each time I knew that I need to transition, what caused it is that sound in my head that I had to follow. It sort of lured me away from what I'm doing. I didn't totally understand it, but I trusted it. Um, and that harm showed up really the moment that we got fund to start this new company in technology. And my harm says, don't do it. We've been waiting for years for that moment, excitingly. And finally, when it arrived, the harm said, don't do it. And the wow. name of the nine volt partners and now it became eight volt partners because I moved out of it, bought a building and started an art school. Uh, totally just like that, just because that's where the hum wanted to take me. And, and that. yeah, you know, I can- I love I, that thing. Do you see that? Where, where does the hum want to take you? Like that hum is like your inner voice, your intuition saying like, hold on a second, this isn't right. I love that you listen to it instead of just went where the money was or went where the success was going to be. You didn't know that you weren't going to be successful doing something else, but that was a pretty much a guarantee when someone says, we need to do this new technology. You easily could have been like, I'll do it. I'll take the money. And and with that money, wouldn't have come happiness because you weren't you weren't listening to the hum. Right. Right? Although you were warning and you're saying, this was the stupidest thing I ever done. You know, it's, it's really scary, but it was too late to go backwards. And oh. uh, and then, you know, you make it work. And then, uh, so all of a sudden I have this building, I have all these students, I have teachers, and I really did not know exactly what I was doing. I've learned from the teachers and one thing led to, to the other. And uh, eventually it became a successful entity um, for 15 years. That's awesome. That's so cool. I don't know if you, you I don't, do you, do you journal? Are you someone who writes a lot? Or I know you're obviously you're very creative, but do you write down your thoughts or do you just, are you more in your head? I'm just curious if you get a lot of this stuff out because you have a lot of cool, really cool lessons. That I, I don't know if you've ever thought about writing a book or if you do, I do any writing at all. I was, I was encouraged to write, but I'm, it's not what I do. You know, right. I, I talk, you know, I, I can well, go. Yeah, in. well, look, can I, can I just interrupt you for one moment? Even though you're not a writer, you have some really cool stories and you don't have to be a writer to get your stories out there. I'm just gonna put that out there, a little, little, little hum in your mind for a minute. And, and who knows, like you have a lot of cool stories and this is just, just your, our conversation is just one little conversation, but you could tell these stories to someone, they write it for you and you get to leave a little bit of a legacy. I think I, I'm just saying, I've never even, I've never even um, suggested that to someone I was talking to in a conversation. I probably said you have a lot of cool ideas, but. I, as I'm writing, I already have a whole page of stuff that you said, and that um, could be kind of cool. It doesn't even have to be a big book. I'm just putting it out there, and and you have a lot of cool things to say and um, share. And I think it's very valuable um, wisdom. So I just I'm just gonna put that out there. Well, you'll always have this conversation too, but that'd be pretty cool. Just saying, <laughs> something else to create. Maybe one of our kids would uh, would drive that. They they've mentioned that a couple of times. Yeah, That's it's because it's cool. It's cool to talk to people that have been through a lot of different things and are on the other side happy and can share their wisdom. Which is one of the reasons I do this podcast because I I'm building this library of conversations so that people can go back and say like uh, my kids, my kids' kids eventually can say you know I don't know if that's possible. You know what? I have proof it's possible. Here's someone. Here's a man. Here's a woman. Here's a 18 year old. Here's an 80 year old thinking the same thing and it is possible. And um, we all have a lot to share and learn from each other. So let me ask you a couple of questions at the end of our conversation to see what you want to answer. Um, I, I love, I want, I want you to answer both of these but I'm okay if you only want to answer one. So what's the greatest gift that you, Morty Bakar, offer the world every day? So you have to brag a little bit. And what's one new thing you're taking away from our conversation today that just came up for you unexpected? Can you repeat this? What, what is the best gift that I have? That you have. So what do you think is the greatest thing you give the world every day? What trait or what, what trait, uh, yeah, characteristic? I, I listen. Mm. And, and uh, through listening, uh, you know, I'm talking most of the talking I'm doing now, but typically it doesn't go that way. Uh, you know, through the work, you know, you, uh, you know, with, with, with every part that I was uh, involved in, whether it was corporate or my own 
um, employees or peer or bosses. I just listen. And, and what that does, I, I, I don't do it for any strategic planning or whatever. That, that's who I am. I just get totally excited about how people think and, and what they need. And, and, and I find out that what I was thinking before listening was totally different and, 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 uh, uh, and brings the, um, the journey of people together in a way that uh, there's harmony, trust, and uh, good progress and, and friendship for, for a long time. I love that. I love that. I wrote down, listen, what you think before you start to listen might just be a little bit different when you're done, which is a really, really good lesson and almost always true, right? Um, and then the final question is, what's one new thing that came up for you or that you're taking away from our conversation today? Like something you said, something I said, something you're feeling or something, just anything. <laughs> you, you actually told me that very clearly. Write a book. <laughs> Write a book. Uh, yes. Maybe yeah. that's what you're being called to do. Well, the, the thing is that the book uh, can be so compounded. Like one thing that I find out through restoration uh, a lot of the objects we do, a lot of them are, are fancy and expensive and, and people would not spend the money restoring unless they get a value back. But many of them, including Kintsugi, there is a story there. It's, it's, uh, it's a religious statue of refugee that was uh, escaped some country and they need to restore it. And, and then they tell me about their journey of why is it broken? Why is it important to them? Uh, or Kintsugi, you know, the, all, all the stories, all, everybody that buys Kintsugi, they have something that drives them to buy it, you know, which mainly uh, um, hard times they've gone through. And um, I would say at least 50% of the people that purchase it, they need to talk to me for some reason. They don't go through the web, they call. Mm -hmm. And this, you want to know why I'm buying it. Sometimes it's inconvenient, uh, but I, I decided that I got a couch here in the studio. I stop what I'm doing. I'm sitting on a couch and I'm listening to their story. And the stories are fascinating and, and, and a wide range. And, and that um, enriched me as far as uh, a perspective of what life I love is. That. Yeah. It's enriching you. And maybe that's part of your book, Marty. Maybe that's it's you offering your insights and then you having peppering that book with little stories of these people that shared their, like you said, they have to share it because there's a really deep memory or, or journey or something. And you're helping them restore part of that by literally restoring this object that helps them stay connected to it. So maybe, yeah. maybe that's what it is. Possibly. Yes. Yeah, that's cool. That's so cool. I learned so much from you today. I'm so glad we chatted. I, um, I'm excited to write all my notes because I know um, I think you're going to be surprised too about what you said. You're going to listen back and be like, wow, I, have, I do have a lot of cool stuff to say. It's fun to write the words and see the words and hear you say them. And I think a lot of people are going to be touched by um, some of your wisdom today, a lot of your wisdom today. And um, so I know that you do this work, you're commissioned. And so if people want to just learn more about, I might, I'm going to put a link to the Kasugi so people can just know what we're talking about, just so they can see what you do. And I'll share other links. Just I think because it's fascinating. It's something I've never heard about before since I before I read the article that you were in um, so I think it's just cool to learn about new kinds of art and um, people can I don't know get learn something new thank you very much yeah it's been such a pleasure thank you for for sharing um, your stories today and and saying yes to this interview and um, I love meeting new people and you're no exception thank you thank you thank you very nice speaking with you bye bye mm -hmm. take care Morty bye everyone bye 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 Thanks for listening. I hope you loved this episode. Don't forget to like us, subscribe, review, and share it. I hope you were truly inspired. And for a little more inspiration, don't forget to pick up my book, Peace, Possibilities, and Perspective, Eight Secrets to Serenity and Satisfaction in Your Life and Career. I can't wait to get you love in your life.